Okay, question number seven from January 2013, M1. <clears throat> question about connected particles, pulleys, um, inclined planes, friction, a few different things here. Now, what we need to do here is read the question very carefully so we get all the points that are important from it. So it says, figure five shows two particles A and B of mass 2m and 4m respectively. So A is 2m and B its mass is 4m. Connected by a light inextensible string. Light meaning we don't consider any weight of the string and inextensible meaning that any particle attached to it will have the same magnitude of acceleration. Initially A is held at rest on a rough inclined plane. So the word rough here says, tells us a friction is going to be involved. Okay, which is fixed to a horizontal or to horizontal ground. The plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha, where the tangent of alpha equals three quarters. Okay, the tangent of alpha is equal to three quarters. That will help us in finding um, when we're resolving forces for particle A. The coefficient of friction between A and the plane is a quarter. So the coefficient of friction is a quarter. That's going to help us when we're dealing with the friction. The, the string passes over a small, a small smooth pulley, small smooth pulley. Okay, so there's no friction in the pulley, um, which is fixed at the top of the plane. The part of the string from A to P, from A to P, is parallel to the line to a line of greatest slope of the plane, and B hangs vertically below P. Okay, so B is vertically below P, and A, okay, basically the length that you see here is the length of the line. Okay. It's it's parallel. It's 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 like being attached to P along the line of greatest slope of the plane A, the inclined plane. So that length that you see here is the length of AP. Okay, so it's like a two-dimensional diagram. That's basically what that is telling us. The string is released from rest. So initially, it's not moving. With the string taut, so the string is tight at the point when it's released. Okay, it's not slack. With A at the point X and B at a height H above the ground. Now it's saying for the motion until B hits the ground, give a reason why the magnitude of the accelerations of the two particles are the same. Now we kind of already answered that question when we were discussing, or when reading the question, it said inextensible. Okay? The string is inextensible, meaning that every particle attached to it will have the same acceleration. So it's not like the string is stretching more in one part than another, so the acceleration of one part will be different than the other. The, re the reason why A and B are both, okay, they have the same um, magnitude of acceleration is because the string is inextensible. So that's fine for answer. The string is inextensible. In X then symbol. No excuses for making a spelling mistake when it's written here. Okay, already so you have to copy that word down. The string is inextensible. No need for a thousand word essay to answer this question either. It's pretty simple. Then it says write down an equation of motion for each particle and find the acceleration of each particle. Okay, I'll just do that on the other side. Now what you need to do here is you need to make a very clear diagram okay, of all the forces acting on the particle. So when it says write down an equation of motion for each particle, it sounds a bit strange. What they basically want you to do is, uh, you know, resolve the forces for each particle. So you're going to use F equals MA, basically. Okay, that's what they mean, actually, yeah? You'll end up with something which tells you about the acceleration of each particle. So let's, first of all, just put down all the forces acting on both particles. So. For B, you have its weight acting down. Let me use one with an arrow. You have its weight acting down. Okay. And its weight is mass times acceleration, which is G, 4mg. Okay, that's 4mg, its weight acting down. And you have the tension of the string, which is holding it up. Okay. And for A, again, its, what, its mass is going to be acting straight down. Okay, let me just move it a bit so I don't... Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Moving the wrong thing. There we are. 
Okay, that's its, it's, ma its mass, its weight is acting straight down, so that's going to be given by 2 mg. Okay, so that's 2 mg acting straight down. Then you have the reaction force as A is in contact with the surface. So that's the reaction force, that's R. That's going to be important when we're dealing with the friction. Uh, we also have the tension in the string here, which is pulling up the plane. And you have the frictional force, okay, acting down the plane, okay, because this particle is moving up the plane. Friction always acts opposing the motion or the tendency to move, to move. Okay, so that's friction. And we know that friction is equal to F max because it's moving. And F max is equal to mu times R. And we know that mu is equal to one quarter, as it told us in the question. We also know that the tangent of alpha, the tangent of alpha is equal to three quarters. And if we make a triangle, which is right angled, and call this alpha. This is 3 over 4, opposite over adjacent. So this must be 5, 3, 4, 5 triangle by Pythagoras. So we can say that therefore the value of sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 3 fifths, and the value of the cosine of alpha is equal to 4 fifths. Now it's much better to use these exact values rather than saying shift tan of 3 over 4 gives you an angle and use the angle and you have to round it to a certain number of decimal places and then you know it's much, much easier to use the exact values these fractions you'll find out that things will cancel out and it'll make life easier and sometimes they ask you for exact answers which is much better for you to use this method when they give you a ratio of an angle use that ratio to work out what the missing side is and then you can work out what the other ratios are okay so now what I'm going to do is one thing that to do with these forces is to write down the you know, resolve the forces that are not parallel to the plane, parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So here we got R, which should be perpendicular to the plane. Let me just straighten that up a bit. Now I'm going to have the weight resolved perpendicular to the plane, and the weight resolved parallel to the plane. Okay, so this angle here is alpha. So this is the weight 2mg resolved perpendicular to the plane, so you're going into the angle. So this is 2mg times cosine alpha. Cosine alpha. And this is the weight resolved going away from the angle given. So this is going to be 2mg times the sine of alpha. Okay? So. Now we have everything written down that we need to be able to answer part B. So part B says write down an equation of motion for each particle. So if we consider B first, because it's got less forces acting on it, you can see it's, it's, it's heading down because B is going towards the ground. And of course A is moving, moving up the plane. Okay, this is A. Now for B, it's going down. So if we resolve the forces, F equals MA. F equals ma. The resultant force is mass times acceleration. Now the resultant force acting on b is 4mg. I'm going to take down as positive for b because it's moving down. So down is positive. I can say that 4mg minus t is equal to ma. The mass is 4m, so it's 4ma. Okay, so that's one equation we found. That's an equation of motion for particle b. It's got something to do with acceleration. And for particle A, all right, I'm going to resolve going up the plane, taking that side as positive. So I've got T minus 2mg sine alpha minus friction equals its mass, which is 2m, times its acceleration, which is the same as this acceleration, which is A. So these are the two equations of motion which I formed, okay, which I'm going to now use to find the acceleration of each particle. Okay, that's enough for us to get these marks for part B. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the acceleration of each particle. So for part C, okay, I need to find what A is. But before I can do that, I need to find what F is. Okay, and we know that F max, I'll, I'll write it up here so we can see what's happening. 
we know that f max, as I wrote up there, is mu r. Mu r. So we need to find what r is. Now to find what r is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resolve perpendicular to the plane. So I'll have r is equal to 2mg cosine alpha. 2mg cosine alpha. Now I know cosine alpha is 4 fifths. So r is going to be 2mg times 4 fifths. 2mg times 4 over 5, which gives us 8mg over 5. 8mg over 5. And we know that f is equal to mu times r. Mu is a quarter. So you have a quarter times 8mg over 5. So the frictional force acting here is going to be 2mg over 5. So 2mg over 5 is the frictional force acting okay, on this particle. And I know that sine of alpha, if we look here, sine of alpha is 3 over 5. Okay? So I have T minus 2mg times 3 over 5. Sine alpha is 3 over 5. Minus F, which we worked out, the frictional force, we just worked it out over here, is 2mg over 5. mg over 5 is equal to 2 times ma. Okay, so let's just tidy this up. T minus, that's 6mg over 5, or 6 over 5mg, minus 2 over 5mg equals 2ma. Oops. Let's get rid of that. Equals 2 times ma. Okay, and these two can be added together. So you have t minus 8 over 5 mg equals 2 ma. Okay, let's call that equation 1 and let's call this one 4 mg minus t equals 4 ma. Let's call that equation 2. <coughs> now, if I add these two equations together, I will eliminate my t. Okay, so adding these two equations together will have t eliminated. So if I add them together, okay, if I do equation 1 plus equation 2, okay, you have t minus t plus minus t to 0, you have minus 8 over 5 plus 4 over 5 mg. So this is like 20 over 5 minus 8 over 5, which is 12 over 5 mg. And you've got 2 ma plus 4 ma, which is 6 ma. Okay, some things will cancel here, like the m's will cancel out. The 6, if you divide both sides by 6, and this side by 6, you're going to get 2 here. So you're left with a is equal to 2 over 5 times g. Okay, meters per second squared. You can leave your answer like that, or you can round it to 2sf, or you, if you wish, you can round it to 3sf, as you wish. Okay, when you use g, you've got the option to leave it in terms of g, or you've got the option to round it to 2sf, so you can say 2 divided by 5 times 9.8. Okay, that gives you 3.92. You could write it as 3.92 meters per second squared. Okay, or if you want to, you could write it as 3.9 meters per second squared. All of those are acceptable answers because when you use G as 9.8, which we are supposed to do, okay, you, that means your final answers can be rounded to 2SF. As G, we used a version of it which is rounded to 2SF. Okay, so all these three are acceptable answers for this part, part C, and I'll do the next part in the next video.